Hello my saw friends! Today, it's kind of a shocker, I have another video and it relates to saw problems. Go figure. Alright, so this is my 2008 Saab 93 Aero, 2.8 liter V6 turbo, 6 speed manual, manual, <laughs> and uh, I'm having some issues and I want to say it's related to the coil packs but I don't know 100%. When I'm at an idle, uh, it seems like the car has a slight miss now, you can't really tell. Yeah, you can't really tell on the RPM gauge there. Um, sometimes it does kind of fluctuate and like, I don't know, it's kind of weird and it probably sounds odd, but like I kind of get used to the vibrations of your car and every so often it seems like it has a very slight miss. And then also too, I'm gonna try to replicate it when I go wide open throttle, it definitely has some like jerkiness to it. So let's try to replicate that real quick. All right, so I did a couple test pulls and apparently I cannot replicate this issue in first second or third gear it does pull like a freight train uh, no stumbling whatsoever in those three gears car is dyno tuned a couple bolt-ons nothing major has a three inch stainless cat back original downpipe cat after that the resonator that's all removed in straight pipe so a um, couple bolt-ons main thing is the tune upgraded clutch and it should be running pretty solid but it's not and uh, I guess it's only in fourth gear and upwards when I'm merging on the highway. So unfortunately I cannot replicate it at this point in time. Um, I just, I don't feel like finding the nearest highway cause it's like 10 minutes away. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I am gonna try to bust out the Tech 2 and see if there's some way I can figure out diagnosing it. I'm not entirely certain. Um, I do have a bunch of spare coils, but I don't want to be throwing one on one cylinder one and, and two and, you know, kind of tracking the misfire that way. I want to somehow diagnose it, maybe with a tech two, see if I can check the parameters or maybe unplug them, check the ohms reading thing, you know, something along those lines. I really don't know. I need to do some research on that, but I figured I would take you along for the journey rather than just buying a whole new set of six coil packs and replacing it because that is absurdly expensive. And I do have a lot of spare used ones. So if I can pinpoint cylinder three misfire, this is the bad coil, pop it out, replace it with a working one and drive on my merry little way and have happy highway pools. So without further ado, let's bust out the TAC-2 and see what issues we can find. So herein lies the number one most magical thing that you will ever want when owning a Saab. And that, my friends, is a Tech 2 scanner. And if you want to ever do any sort of programming, setting changes, diagnosing, diagnostics, then you're going to need one of these. And if you want to find out a little more information, I did in fact do a video on that. So just go ahead and click up there. So let's get this hooked up and see what information we can find out. See if we can pinpoint if a coil is bad, if that's even possible with this. I honestly don't know. And uh, we'll, we'll play around with some settings and see what we can do. So let's get started. So we're in the car. I have the Tech 2 scanner all hooked up. If Of course I didn't even do it. Nope. It's like a 
zero. Is that how you drive to work every day? No. Oh. Okay, please, please. Okay. Five. Five and two. Okay. Five and two. All right. We're gonna try it again. Oh my god. You know my biggest fear is to die in a car accident, right? Uh, Now that we did some diagnosing with the Tech 2, I have come to the realization that Cylinder 2 is having a misfire of some sort. Now, there could be a whole slew of issues, but one of the most common issues with these cars, especially the V6 2.8 liter turbo, is going to be the coils. There's a lot of heat that pumps out of here. Turbo's right here, and the way this setup is, it's very tightly packed in there. So there's a lot of heat and the engine and the cooling system does a great job at dissipating the heat but a lot of it still gets contained in here and the coils is going to be one of the top issues for misfires. So, so if you're not too familiar with a lot of the common issues like the coils, go ahead, I did a video up here for the five most common issues with these sobs. One of them being, hint hint, the coils. So here is the engine bay. Um, I have a misfire in cylinder two. So this is a V6. There's a bank of three cylinders back here bank of three cylinders in the front. So how it goes is cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, four, five, and six. So we've got two, four, six, one, three, five in the back. So to further do some diagnostics here, we are going to pop off this engine cover. Pops off like such, very simple. And here, the front three, cylinder two, cylinder four, cylinder six, very easy to get to. You peek back here. Cylinder 135, nightmare to get to. It's a, a hassle and a half. So what I will be doing is cylinder two misfiring. I'm going to be switching these two coils. Cylinder two is gonna go right here, this coil, and then cylinder four coil is gonna go on here. So theoretically, if it's in fact the coil that is causing the issue, after I swap these two, I'm gonna drive the vehicle around. If it's the coil, then cylinder four will therefore be the culprit of the misfire. If it continually happens on cylinder two, then I know there's another issue. Spark plug, fuel injector, list kind of goes on from there. But I'm thinking because coils is gonna be a number one issue with these vehicles and this engine combination, I think it's gonna be the coil. So without just throwing money at this, just replacing the coil on a whim, we're gonna do a little more diagnostics and then we're gonna switch this and see what happens. So here I have a 10 millimeter. Super simple, undo that, undo that. And this bolt won't come out, it's actually part of the coil. Okay, that's loose and may need a screwdriver to pop that out. Nope, we got that. So, cylinder four, theoretically, good coil. Cylinder two, what I think the issue is, pop this out, put it into cylinder four. have it that easy swapped it over we'll pop this cover back on held on with pressure put the oil fill cap back on close this hood clean up the tools fire up the tech 2 and see if that cylinder 2 misfire goes to cylinder 4 so let's see what happens Now I have the car running with the swap coils. Again, cylinder two was the original misfire, the original culprit. That coil, the suspected bad one, I swapped to cylinder four. So now in theory, we should see a cylinder four misfire. So now I have the car running. I'm actually just hanging out in the garage. Door open, of course, because I don't want to die of carbon monoxide poisoning, but 
before I did any pulls in Mexico, I wanted to see if I can kind of replicate a cylinder for misfire. Okay, so I sat here for about two minutes with the vehicle running, and now this thing is climbing and climbing, and actually, before something happens, because of course, even with that misfire, so basically the coil is not firing, it's not shooting the spark, but it's still going to be loading up on fuel. So that's no bueno. That is definitely not good. So actually, let me show you what I have for a replacement. Here is what I have. I have a whole bunch of used coils. These I pulled from a 2007 Sub 93 Aero, obviously with the 2.8 liter V6 turbo. And these, I believe, are original coils. These are Bosch's. Part number is right there. So. Please comment down below if you know if these are original or not. I honestly don't know without doing some research, but uh, pretty much all of them were the exact same uh, with the exception of this one. This one's a little bit different. Now, this is the one that I'll be swapping it with mainly because looking at this one, it looks like the date of this is March 7th of 2006. It's a 2007 car, so it would have been built in 2006, so that makes sense, being the original. And then this one, I would say, is April 11th of 2013. So, 2006 versus 2013. I think I'm going to swap in this one, um, but, you know, if you know something that I don't, reading the date wrong, or... Uh, you know, that's not the OG part number. Please, comment down below. I don't want to be spreading misinformation. But basically, I have six coils to choose from, but I don't want to be swapping every single one of them because, again, I did pull these from the junkyard. I do not know that they're 100% good or not. The car was in a junkyard for a reason. So um, I pulled all six in the hopes that I can just swap one of these on there. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to swap this on there. Uh, I'll quit rambling. We'll put it on there. We'll data log. We'll see what happens. So one tip I do have that I didn't mention in the first go around, I would probably put this cap back on there just so you don't drop anything into the crankcase. Even though these bolts are still attached to the coil, you can't fully remove them. Kind of easy to drop things down in there and that's definitely no good. And what's interesting too is this is the coil that's in the car, an NGK and it's definitely not original. Um, I don't know if this is a high performance one. So that's interesting as well because it has that same Bosch insignia on it. And I don't remember offhand if that's the same part number. It's the NGK. And this is that one from 2013. And part number wise, the exact same. So... Again, maybe somebody in the comment section has more information than I do, but uh, this car has been dyno tuned. I know there's some performance goodies added to it, but uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. It's labeled NGK, but has the Bosch numbers on there. But anyways, so out with the old, in with the um, probably older but working coil. Um, so just reverse order. And also another tip that I don't think I mentioned the first go around, make sure you thumb start the bolt first. You don't want to cross thread anything. Everything's nice and tight. Pop that off. There 
we go. Let's go ahead, throw the Tech 2 back in, take a first spin, see what happens. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we're fixed. So I put my fancy Saab scanner back. I have the Saab story back in my home base, my Saab Central here. Um, kind of lonely, I guess I could use another Saab. Maybe in the future. Anyway, so here is that bum NGK coil, or Bosch. I really don't know, it's kind of weird. But either way, I know that this is not the original equipment. So if you know what the OEM brand part number, please comment down below and share with our fellow Saab enthusiasts. Now, I will say that this fancy scanner, this Tech 2 scanner, is not 100% required if you're trying to diagnose something like a misfire. Now, if I did not have a Tech 2 scanner, where I would start would be, if you feel what the car is doing as far as like not running right, go to the parts store, see if they can scan and come up with any code, say a misfire on cylinder two, or, Purchase something like this, a cheap Chinese brand scanner. So click up here, I have a little more information on that. But anyways, so you figure out you have a cylinder two misfire, do exactly what I did in the beginning of the video, take that cylinder two coil, that may be bad, swap it to cylinder four, clear the code, drive around for some time, and see if that cylinder two misfire goes to cylinder four, and then of course swap to a brand new OEM coil or a used OEM coil. Highly suggest stay away from eBay and Amazon, the Chinese examples, because they just do not last. And of course, clear the code at the end of it and see what happens. But I just wanted to say that this is not acquired when you're diagnosing certain things. Now you can do data logging, check BCM codes, radio codes, and the list goes on and on and on with the Tech 2. I mean, you are not exactly comparing apples to apples here, but I just wanna state that it's not 100% required when you're trying to diagnose certain things. So with that being said, I'm gonna quit rambling. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to drop a comment down below and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. All that stuff helps me out. I love doing what I do, sharing videos, sharing Sob knowledge, and hopefully Sobs will be seen on the road forever and ever. So with that being said, I appreciate you watching. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.